Hello everyone, my name is Feeble and welcome to the AFMR 2020 edition tutorial. So in this video I'm going to be going over how to use the rig to its fullest potential and uh, how to use a bunch of different settings and uh, going over a couple of questions that people ha had asked me about the rig. So let's get into it. So the first thing to do is uh, download the rig. Um, so you can find the rig uh, with the link in the description. It's going to take you to this site right here, uh, which is the download. Uh, so you can read all of this if you want. These are all just uh, some features in the rig. Um, and then I have included uh, updates uh, throughout the rig. Uh, so you can see what was changed during what versions and uh, kind of get a rough idea of what uh, how to use it and uh, all the features. So to download the rig, all you have to do is click this download button. Uh, once you get that, you're going to be prompt to put in your email address. Uh, don't put in a fake email address just because I have no way of sending it to you uh, when it updates. Um, so that's how updates work in this is I email you the updates. So make sure to kind of check your email probably weekly. So I'm pretty sure this might be the last update uh, that I make unless there's any bugs or anything. But um, yeah, so all you want to do is put in your actual email address so I can email you the rig when it does update, if it does update. Um, so yeah, and then you just click continue. And then you're going to be prompted with two different download links. Um, you just go through that and then it will uh, download it to uh, wherever you have it downloaded. So when you download the rig, you're going to get it in a WinRAR file. So all you have to do is just right click it and extract your desktop uh, or, wherever, or wherever you want it to be. <laughs> um, and then you'll be, uh, once you extract that, uh, you will have these two things. So here you have the README folder. Uh, I just kind of go over some stuff in here. Uh, if I don't really, you don't have to read this stuff, but I highly recommend that you read uh, everything up to this point. So all of this uh, that I have highlighted, I would recommend reading all of that just so you can understand um, everything. Uh, it just kind of gives a brief thing. Uh, so I've had a couple questions about this. This uh, My rig is not limited by a Cinema 4D version. So um, I know there's a couple rigs out there that are the same way. They don't have a limit, such as Anishwish, FMR Animate, version 2, and I'm pretty sure the Angelo rig. So every other rig besides those that I just mentioned, uh, including mine, are version limited. So that basically means you can't extrude the arms and legs on uh, on any rig in Cinema 40 R19 and later. So yeah, just keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, just kind of giving you guys a heads up if you didn't know why uh, I kind of went through that, but yeah. So. Basically, with this uh, text document, I update it every time. I update the rig, and I add uh, kind of what I just was included with this uh, under these uh, little dashes, and then I include the date. Um, so, yeah. So in the folder, you have uh, a couple things in here. You have the previews, uh, which there's nothing really special in here. It's just a bunch of previews of the rig. In this text folder, you have a couple things in here. You have the uh, cape, the skin, and the elytra. So if something isn't appearing uh, or it's appearing black on the rig, you can just grab the skins from here uh, and then just put it into the respective spot. I also included a bunch of other capes in here. Uh, so you can see that there is uh, quite a few in here that you can mess around with. Uh, then in, in the tool text folder, this is where all the uh, tool textures are. So I've included a uh, tool asset um, kind of rig, I guess, in, in my rig, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, it's an asset so uh, I made it and it took quite a while to import all the textures and everything but um, yeah so these are all 1.14 textures and then I also included netherite uh, not something I've seen in Cinema 40 uh, recently so yeah there's that okay so getting into the rig now all you have to do to install it is right click it copy press windows key and R and then when you get this little run box, you want to type in percent app data percent. Uh, if you play Minecraft, um, then you should already kind of have this saved. But uh, yeah, you just click OK. Uh, when you get this folder, you want to come down to your Maxon. And then you want to find the Cinema 4D version uh, that you use. I use R21, so that's what I'm going to go to. Then you want to go to Library, Browser. And then you want to paste the rig into here. You can see that I already have my rig in there, so I'm not going to paste it. But uh, that's where you would want to paste it. So once you have that in your uh, content browser, uh, you just want to restart Cinema 4D if it uh, isn't already closed. Okay, so now that Cinema 4D has restarted, to uh, basically open the rig, you want to click Content Browser. 
and then uh, here, uh, sorry, you want to click Content Browser, and then you want to click Presets, and then uh, there's the rig right there. Uh, or if you have a bunch of other rigs, you want to find AFMR or Advanced Google Minecraft Rig 2020. Uh, yeah, and then open it. And then here's the rig. So before I actually open the rig, I'm going to go over uh, each thing. So in the assets folder, here I have the tools that I previously mentioned. I'll go over this a little bit later when I go over the attachments. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to leave that there. And then also here's the textures for everything. Uh, and then you have the text folder for the skins. So you can also grab them from here if something isn't appearing. Okay, so just to open the rig, just double click it and it will uh, open up. And uh, yeah, here's the rig. So what you want to do now is you just want to click objects. Uh, and it'll bring you back to this page uh, and that's going to be kind of crucial to uh, all of that so uh, working and everything so yeah so the way I'm going to organize this tutorial is by uh, going over the controllers first and then the head controllers or the face controllers and then going over the user data so all this stuff and then I'm going to go over any other additional things like such as attachments assets um, copyright and all that stuff so yeah, I'm going to try to make it, uh, leave a timestamp down in the description, but if I mess up on something, I'm sorry. Um, so yeah. Okay, so to get started, uh, we have this top controller up here, which will control the head squash. Uh, so you can move this around and kind of mess around with that and have fun with that. <laughs> um, but yeah. So then you have the uh, neck controller right here. This will move the head around uh, and the user data and everything. And uh that's kind of what that does. Then you have the upper body controller. So this will control everything above the um, the upper body. Then you have the mid body. This will uh, do the same thing, just at the middle point. Um, so that's what that does. And then you have the hips. So this will move the hips and the uh, legs. Um, that's kind of what that does. <laughs> okay, so this controller will control the uh, waist uh, and it will control everything above the waist and you can rotate it, uh, do all that stuff with it. So coming over to the arms now, uh, we have the shoulder joint up here, or the shoulder controller. This will uh, uh, kind of do that. So uh, you can make uh, cool stuff with that, like a detached arm or something for animations or for renders, uh, up to you. Okay, so I'm gonna be adding this into uh, the editing because um, I'm currently doing that right now. Uh, and I forgot to, I left something out that I probably should have explained. Um, so first, if you, uh, I've had a couple questions about how to like rotate the arm so you can move the shoulder. Uh, so the way you do this is you go to the the rig, you go to animation slash smart, and then you want to turn off smart move, and then you want to open up the rig. Uh, so go open this up and then go to joints controllers c dot main and then just open up all of these uh, until you get the, to the neck, and then you want to open up the arms, and then what you want to do is you want to take the the goal, the G dot hand, and put that underneath its respective uh, its shoulder joint. So now, when you rotate the the arm, it will rotate like that. Uh, so just kind of thought that I would edit this in here, um, just because I've had a couple questions about it, and it uh, really helps when making uh, renders. Uh, also, if you get like this, you just move it over. Uh, super simple. Um, and uh, yeah, you can still use everything perfectly fine. Uh, that's just. I wanted to make sure that I included that because I've had a couple questions about it. So yeah. You have the finger controller right here, so this will control the uh, fingers. So this you can also press Q on this and it will enable uh, the other finger, uh, just single finger uh, controls. Uh, so really useful uh, for that. You have the wrist controller right here, so this will control the wrist. So you can rotate this on its uh, H axis, P axis, and B axis, um, just like that. Then you have the main controller, so it's at the very bottom here. This will control the arm uh, and how it bends and everything like that. So for the legs, you have the uh, top leg controller right here. Uh, so again, you can make this like a detached leg uh, or something like that. Um, or if you just want to kind of move the leg or something, uh, you could do that. Then we have the foot controller. So this will uh, do a couple things. So the, first of all, uh, the main thing, it will control the leg and how the uh, leg moves and how it bends and everything. And then it will also control the ankles. So you can control the ankles with that by rotating it. Uh, so it works pretty much every way. And then you have the base down here. So this is uh, kind of just for moving the entire rig around. Uh, you can rotate it and everything um, and move it around. So that's what that's used for.
Okay, so now we're going to be going over the uh, the Q command controller for the face HUD, uh, just the command or the uh, controllers in general. So to open this, all you have to do is click on it and press Q. Uh, I put a little key right there, um, so that's how you know. Uh, if this doesn't work for you when you press Q, you want to press Shift F12, and then when you get this customization commands window, you want to type in toggle parent generator and then uh, you'll find it right there and then you want to change this to Q or you can leave it at that uh, whatever it is um, that will be here button to open this and kind of get around the rig in general so just keep that in mind okay so first things first I'm gonna be going over these uh, little switches right here so these will control individual parts of the rig so this first one for example will control uh, controllers so if you press Q on these uh, it will activate and deactivate stuff so this one will hide and en enable the controllers uh, so this is useful if you want to like uh, extrude and kind of get past these controllers uh, you can just do that or if you just want to look at a render without the controllers before you render it out uh, that's what it's also used for this next one is for the face controllers so if you press Q on that it will open up the face controllers and um, then you can go into detail with moving all of this stuff and whatever. <laughs> this one is for the body subdivisions. So when you press Q on this, it will enable the body subdivision. So the arms, uh, body, and legs. Uh, and disabling that will uh, do that. This one is for the face subdivisions. So when you press Q on this, it will enable uh, the facial subdivisions and make everything look round and cartoony. Uh, and I also need to fix that. <laughs> But yeah. Okay, so I think the best way to go over these controllers is to um, go from top to bottom and left to right. So I'm going to kind of go through these really quickly just because I want to keep this video kind of short and uh, not ramble on too much about it. Um, but yeah, so let's, I'm going to go over that now. So this controller right here will uh, make the eyes go cross side. <laughs> so that's kind of a fun little controller that you can mess around with. This controller right here will move the eyebrow FFD in the center, so you can do something like that. Uh, and keep in mind, all of these controllers, they uh, reflect it over to the other side and control the other side. So like for example, this one controls the left eyebrow, uh, this one will control the right eyebrow. So just keep that in mind. This one will uh, lower the eye uh, eyelid, the lower eyelid, so you can do that. This one will raise the upper eyelid so if you want to make it look uh, kind of surprised, you can do that. This controller right here controls the blink. Uh, this is uh, kind of how you would do uh, single pupils. If you wanted them, you can kind of close them a little bit. And then there's an eye resize inside of the uh, user data, which I'll go over uh, probably uh, later on in the video. This controller will control the eye, like the uh, pupil position and where it's looking. So if you notice how how adaptive these eyes are like they the eyelids will adjust and adapt to where uh, the pupils are looking so it's I, I spent a lot of time on this and um, put a lot of effort into this so I think it looks really good so uh, yeah one thing to also note with this is that the head will also turn with the, the eyelids uh, or with where it's looking I guess uh, so yeah and then also the eyebrows are adaptive too so can see that right there i put these little side controllers right here for individual pupil control so if you have the uh the eyes looking like that and you kind of want this eyebrow or eyebrow if you want this pupil looking over uh or being over here more you can do that uh, so that's uh pretty useful i use that a lot so i'm going to kind of go uh through here kind of weirdly but um shouldn't be that big of a deal so this controller right here is for the mouth this controller is for the mouth position, so if you want the mouth to be kind of uh, in a different spot, you can do that. These little side controllers right here will control the uh, the smile and the frown. Uh, so if you want it to smile, you can do that. Uh, you can also notice that when the uh, when it smiles, it pushes the eyelid up. So it's I made the eyes really adaptive, and I'm pretty happy with it. So um, hopefully you guys do like that too and you find that pretty cool this controller is for the uh, the cheek puff so maybe if uh, the character is eating something or they're uh, underwater holding their breath uh, that's what I would use this for so a uh, pretty cool feature um, 
and then the mouth will also kind of adapt to that too. Uh, but yeah, it's a cool little feature. This controller right here is for the top teeth. Uh, so I didn't add a bottom teeth controller just because, um, uh, I don't know, it would have been a lot to add um, and kind of packed through here. So I just added one, but the teeth do have their individual controllers right here. So uh, you can do it through there if you would like. This controller, this little baby one, is for the mouth shape. So if you want a more squared off mouth, uh, you could slide that over. Or if you just like the regular mouth, uh, which I do, <laughs> uh, that's where uh, that's how you do that. This controller is kind of in the wrong spot, but this one will control the uh, the eye height. Uh, I had a lot of people asking me about this, but uh, that's probably the lowest it can go without um, completely bugging and breaking. But um, yeah, so just know that there's a limit and you shouldn't really go past that limit, but uh, you can if you want to. So I had a lot of people asking me about this, uh, about how to move the eyebrows. I guess there was a lot of confusion, um, even though you could just do something like this. <laughs> uh, super easy, but um, I made it even easier. So you can just click this controller right here, and it will control the eyebrows. So uh, yeah, you can make it mad, and then if you want to go into extra detail, you can kind of bring the eyebrow like that, and then kind of do something like that. A uh, little bit of extra detail. So uh, yeah, I made this controller, and uh, hopefully people that ask for it um, do enjoy it so yeah so I should probably actually explain this controller a little bit better uh, bringing it up will obviously bring it up bring it down will bring it obviously down uh, bringing it left will make it mad and right will make it uh, sad this controller up here will control the the eyebrow uh, thickness so uh, yeah do with that what you will <laughs> okay so I think I've covered everything as far as the controllers go on the outside um, so I think now I'm going to go to the uh, user data. So all you have to do is just click this little base right here, or you can click right here. Uh, I typically press or click on that one um, just so I know. Uh, but yeah, so here we're going to get into the user data. I'm going to go tab by tab so I, it doesn't get confusing on where I'm at. Uh, and I'm also going to undock this and um, kind of bring this down like that. Okay, so in the main options, you're going to have like a little read thing right here. You don't have to read it if you want. I just kind of put it there um, uh, just for notice. Uh, my copyright right here. And then you have the skin folder, uh, or the, I guess the selector. So you just click these three dots, and then you uh, pick your skin path. Make sure that's a 1.8 skin, uh, so it kind of looks like this, and it's in a 64 by 64 uh, image. So just keep that in mind. Then you have the hat and extrude. Um, toggles right here so this is used for uh, extruding mainly and uh, the hat layer so you can disable the hat layer if you want uh, and then you also have the extrude layer right here uh, then you can take out the skin and everything and extrude the hair uh, with uh, whatever you want to do with it <laughs> uh, but yeah that's that so if you come over to customization there's a lot in here to cover so uh, first things first is the reflectance uh, this first reflectance toggle is for the entire body, so you can, it kind of gives it that glossy effect. Um, but I don't really like this, but I know some people do, so uh, that's there. I also had a couple questions about the um, the eye reflectance and how to turn it off. Um, it was really complicated on how to do it before, but I added a toggle right here, so you can just disable it like that. Uh, so it's super easy now uh, if you don't want the reflectance in the eye. Then there's a limb toggle, so this will just uh, basically do what it kind of intends. So you can disable these if you're trying to extrude. Um, uh, so yeah, it makes it really easy. Subdivisions. Uh, you can read these if you want, but I'm just going to kind of go over it. Uh, it says make sure you should turn these off before you extrude. You don't have to. Uh, you can actually leave them on and then extrude with them on, but I don't really uh, recommend doing that. Uh, this next thing, editor and renderer. The editor, I would... I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you leave this at two, um, maybe even three if you want to really push it, but I would not go above three uh, just because it'll lag your computer, uh, lag Cinema 4D, and maybe even crash your computer if you don't have a good computer. So just leave this at like two. It, it wouldn't, it's not going to hurt you. The head smoothness, uh, if you notice how the eyes are kind of like rounded, uh, I really like that effect. Um, but if you don't, you can just change that through here. Uh, so if you drag this back, it'll make it more of a squared off head, which I, I mean, I guess like I can understand why some people would like that, but I like the uh, roundness, but not like 
that much. <laughs> so by default, it's at six. But if you don't like that, then you can, of course, change it. I resize. This is what I was talking about. If you want to make single pupils, uh, you can just drag this up and it will uh, make single pupils and it will uh, kind of do that. Now we get into the face toggles. So there's a lot in here. <laughs> uh, so first off, you have the pupil toggle. You have the eye right, eye left, uh, eyebrow left, eyebrow right. Um, you have the face toggle. So if you have skin that if you have a skin that has really really low eyes, uh, I would recommend turning this on so that uh, you don't have any clipping issues or anything, um, just to make your life easier. Uh, I put that there. You have the tongue disable, teeth disable. You have the nose. Um, so yeah, there's a little nose. <laughs> yeah, if you want to use this, you can. It's kind of cute. <laughs> But um, yeah, there's a nose. You have the eye sparkles. There's a couple in here. I only added two. Uh, so you have non, and then you have anishwidge, and then you have, uh, oh, and then you have uh, just regular. Okay, so coming in to the face colors slash pupil customization. Um, this one was highly recommended. A lot of people wanted this. Uh, they recommended me to add this, so I did. <laughs> um, yeah. So you have the default eyes. Uh, this is what they've been since day one. Um, so they're just kind of the classic eyes of uh, this rig, I guess. Um, look really nice. <laughs> uh, but if you don't like that, you have, you have these ones. They're more realistic. Uh, type 3. These are just default eyes. Um, so, like Minecraft style. And then you have these ones. Uh, so, yeah. And then you can also change the color. So you, you just go to this pupil color and then you can uh, you know change the color uh, to whatever you want it and it will uh, change. So pretty easy to uh, do all that. Um, I think I'm gonna leave it like that for the rest of the video. Okay, so then you have the eyebrow uh, one color and two color. Uh, the reason they split it was because the eyebrows you can see are two different colors. So uh, yeah, so you can make this like, I don't know, blue or green or whatever and then you can make this like red <laughs> you do something like that uh typically though he would want to make it the uh, same color as the hair uh then everything else like the the back of the eye color so if you want to make him look a little tired you could do something like that um tongue color teeth color nose color uh sparkle color all that stuff is in there and then you have the bends so uh normally it's set to sharp just because that's what everyone likes but there is smooth uh, right there so basically you have the sharp end like this and then when you turn subdivisions on it will be uh, kind of like a sharp smooth uh, which is what I prefer and what I really like um, it's my favorite so yeah but if you want um, to have smooth bends you just come here and find that uh, that's the left leg so yeah then you have smooth bends and uh, they work really well so pretty cool and then you have the arm stretches and uh, leg stretches. So this basically controls how much the uh, arm will stretch. Uh, so it's not set to a whole lot right now, but you can, of course, I guess, make that really, really long and <laughs> get spaghetti arm. Uh, so that's there if you want to do that. I don't really like it, so I'm not going to do anything with that. You have the controller codes here. So head, face, body, uh, right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg. Uh, I like these colors how they are, so I'm just going to leave them, but you can change these and customize it uh, to whatever your heart desires. <laughs> Next, we have the, uh, the deformers. So I kind of went with a CMR feel of deformers for this uh, rig, um, and I think they turned out really well. So uh, yeah, I'm happy with them. But if you don't like them, of course, you can disable them. So uh, you can do that. Uh, but I like the deformers, so they're on by default, and this is my rig. Um, I had a couple people telling me that deformers are kind of not the style anymore, but I'm, I don't know, I like them. Uh, there's a round thing to this, so you can see that they're really flat right now, which is default. Uh, but if you want them to be round, uh, you have a little round toggle right there. I like the roundness <laughs> that, that these have, so sometimes uh, I will use them in banners and stuff. Uh, the only thing is that it kind of messes with the fingers a little bit. Um, not too much, though, actually. I didn't think it was, that was a lot worse. Then you have deformer view, so if you want to look at all the deformers, so if you want to look at all the deformers, you can look at it through there. And then, of course, if you want to change any deformers, you can do it through here. I made sliders for each of the deformers, 
that are in the uh, mesh. And if you want to add your own deformers, you can do that. Just be careful though, because uh, the the arm bends are using FFDs, so you want to make sure that you map it out um, uh, perfectly. And it shouldn't be a shouldn't be really that hard of a process to figure out. So. Um, just because I have everything laid out uh, really well. So I have these really mapped out well. Uh, I have a line that separates the just the uh, D dot and the ID dot, uh, which ID means important deformers and then just deformers. So for any of the deformers that you do want to add, make sure that they go in this section right here and these important deformers uh, stay here. All right, so that's it for the customization. So I, I hope this was really uh, laid out well and you all can understand this um, pretty well. Uh, but yeah, so moving into the smart slash animation, uh, animation slash smart rather, uh, this is where all the animation stuff is. And I know there's not a whole lot, but I kind of shrunk it down to keep it simple. Um, so you have smart move, which is the arms. Uh, and I'm actually going to quickly disable the subdivision so it's not laggy. But so you have the uh, smart move, so how the body will bend with the arms. And this uh, applies to both arms. So yeah. Uh, but if you don't want that, uh, you just click disable and it will uh, disable it. So this actually here is for the legs. So by default, the legs don't have smart move on. And that's because I know a lot of animators uh, do not use smart move in the legs and it's not actually useful or helpful. Uh, I just know that using it in the body is helpful, um, but not in the legs in the slightest. Um, but if you just want to mess around with it, um, I have it in there. So all you have to do is just click enable and then it, uh, yeah, you can mess around with the smart move um, just like that. Uh, and this leg smart move is um, probably the best I've actually seen. Um, not to boast, but uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of other rigs that don't do this too, too well, but um, yeah. And then you have all the uh, face uh, automations, I guess. So smart blink, that's normally on by default. There's a couple things I need to go in and fix and switch up a little bit uh, that are going to be the defaults. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But normally all of these are on by default. Uh, so smart blink, this is basically when you uh, blink uh, or when the character blinks rather, uh, it will kind of squish the head down. So uh, that's kind of what that is. And then it works for both uh, sides. So you can you know do that. There's smart look, which is basically how the head will rotate when uh, you're when the character's looking. So you can see how it rotates. Uh, that's what that does. Um, but if you don't like that, of course, you can change that and turn it off. So you get that stiff kind of feel. Hair dynamics. Uh, this is kind of a fun little feature that I like that um, maybe not a lot of you have probably noticed. But to me, I love this. It's uh it's just satisfying to look at. So basically you see how the hair is uh, moving kind of kind of jiggles a little bit. Um, I just really like that. Uh, it's just kind of a fun little feature. And then also when you move the uh, smart move, it will also do the uh, same thing. So it's kind of just a fun little feature that I added. There's smart face, which is basically how the eyes are super, super smart uh, and adaptive. Uh, but if you don't want that, you can turn that off and then they'll just go back to their stiff, regular, um, kind of just looking like that. Um, so yeah, you have vibrate. So basically these will uh, kind of give you like an idle effect. So you can see that the arms are moving just like that. Um, and of course you'd want to turn up the keyframes a little bit, or well, maybe a lot of bit actually. <laughs> uh, so something like this, and then it'll kind of give it like an idle effect. Uh, like they're just standing, waiting around for something. Um, and then you also have it for the uh, body, uh, the head. And yeah, it kind of gives it that kind of cool <laughs> swaying effect. I don't know. Um, you can change these with the uh, on the controllers. Each of the controllers have their own vibrate tags, so you can go through there and change it in there. So that's it for the smart animation. Uh, next thing is the cape, and I'm gonna kind of skim through these just because these are not really important. Um, these are just kind of uh, side things that you don't probably really care about that much. But here's the cape. Uh, you control it by using this little controller down here. Um, pretty easy. And then you can also change the texture through there. Uh, mess around with all this stuff if you want. Uh, but yeah, Elytra, kind of the same premise. Um, you have uh, the Elytra right here. And 
Um, I need to fix this <laughs> again. See, there's a, c a couple things going through this that I've noticed and find out. Uh, but when you render it, it won't uh, pixelate like this. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. But uh, these controllers will kind of sway it out. Um, you do it right. <laughs> Uh, and then these boxes, if you click on them, you come down to this little orange dot, and that will be the uh, bend deformer. And you can kind of make it look more like a wing. Um, so yeah, that's what that's used for. You also have this top controller up here that will control the entire thing. Um, so kind of useful, I guess. You also have the skin texture here. You can have hue and saturation, uh, lightness, and then you can change the controller colors. It's up to you. Okay, now that we are finished with uh, all of that, that took quite a while. Okay, so I'm going to get into the uh, all the other stuff now um, that are kind of just uh, other things that you might want to know about. Uh, so first is the attachments uh, and slash asset tools. <laughs> um, so the, the rig does not come with any tools, as you can probably tell. Um, I didn't add any, but I actually added uh, in the content browser, in the assets, I did add these type of tools. So there's no tools in the rig, it's just separate. Uh, so you can import these into another rig if you want, if you like these, um, just the default tools. Uh, yeah, so all you do is just double click it, go back to objects, uh, and then here is the uh, the item. Uh, so you have this controller right here that you can just click and it will uh, move that around. And that's also where the user data actually is for all of this. Um, but before we get into that, um, so I'm going to show you how to attach basically any tool, any weapon, any uh, thing you want to be holding so uh, I want this tool to be in this hand so all I'm gonna do is just move this up there just like that uh, and I'm gonna kind of position this a little bit better uh, and there we go so then what you want to do to attach it is you can type up here a dot and then you'll get a list of these don't pay attention to this because uh, that's not gonna do anything but um, I listed these out so uh, you can see that they're all right here but if you don't want to do that you can open this up click attachments and then they're all right there uh, but i have this naming feature just to make it easy uh, so you take the a dot tools and since this is the character's right arm so if we were looking at it like this this is the character's right arm that's how everything is listed out uh, you want to drag this underneath uh, right hand attachments and then uh, now when you move the hand it will move with it uh, so it super easy to attach things in it um, yeah and then one thing uh, that I think a lot of people want is to have the wrist move uh, also like link to it so that's what I did um, so it's yeah <laughs> it's it's super smart so uh, it's super easy to add tools and everything and you could do this with basically any rig uh, or with any uh, tool rig or anything uh, so kind of moving into the uh, textures and the user data for this. Uh, it's super simple. Uh, so you have uh, the tool right here. So uh, this little slider you can pick like if you want sword, pickaxe, shovel, axe, hoe, whatever. Uh, so if you want sword, uh, you can change between the uh, different ores. So there's you know wooden, stone, iron, gold, and diamond, and netherite. Um, and then you have the size. So if you want to make kind of a smaller sword or a bigger sword, <laughs> it's up to you. Um, but yeah, and then. Also, these are actually extrudable, so you can uh, extrude these if you want to, um, which always makes it look a lot better, in my opinion. So, yeah, you can uh, extrude these just like that, and there you go, and then everything still works perfectly fine. Okay, so that's basically it for this rig. Um, I uh, don't really have anything else to kind of show you about this. This is pretty much everything. Uh, if you have any questions about the rig or uh, anything in general that you want to ask me, um, go join my discord or you can follow me on twitter and ask me through there um, whatever you prefer but that's going to be it for this tutorial guys uh, hopefully you guys all enjoyed and uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying the rig and um, yeah i think we're up to like 200 like 200 and like five or something downloads so you guys have been honestly recently killing it with the downloads like um and i think the video is about to hit 800 or it is at 800 i don't even know so in the span of two weeks that's it's honestly nuts to me that you guys have shown that much support um but yeah thank you for all the support and the downloads and using the rig uh but yeah so that's gonna be it for this uh thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys later peace out